I'm really on the fence about this gadget. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some chopping gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. If we're not bottoming out here on the top, then the top would be a lot easier to spin. So as you push down here, you're gonna have some mechanical advantage. I would think about a third blade, possibly. Seems like a little less work. These are the products I am going to test. Salad chopper, industrial vegetable chopper, herb chopper, cheese chopper, salad cutting bowl. Salad chopper. Its purpose in life is to turn a tossed salad into a chopped salad. So I have now some mostly destemmed dino kale and I've got some roasted garlic Caesar salad that's gonna top it all off. Let's see how this goes. I'm not sure how successful I am. I think I'm damaging the kale more than I'm slicing it. Uh, let me try this just on the cutting board. I'm having a little more luck on the cutting board, I think. Let's put in some cherry tomatoes and some cucumbers some feta cheese. It is not really slicing the tomatoes, it's more like squashing them. Look at this poor little mangled tomato. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. It takes a while to eat dino kale. Let's see how the salad chopper compares to using a plain old kitchen knife. I can tell just by pushing my fork around that it's definitely more consistent in terms of the way it's been chopped. So right now I am leaning heavily towards using a knife. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give this salad chopper a two out of five. I think it may have some advantages if you wanna actually chop the salad while it's still in the bowl. Let's test its usability. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna point out or exaggerate any deficiencies in the design. Let's give it a go. I am going to start chopping, left hand only. And I can feel that it is not really chopping through the leaves at all. Again, cucumbers, no problem. Tomatoes, getting smashed. I feel like I'm at a point where I have given it all that I'm willing to give. Might as well eat left-handed as well. Not nearly as well chopped as I would want in a chopped salad. In terms of usability, I would give this salad chopper a two out of five. I still think it takes quite a bit of work to use it and to chop salad, and I think you've got better alternatives. Let's see how I would redesign this. And there are a couple of things that come to mind. The radius of the bowl doesn't match the radius of the chopper. I'm going to eliminate these teeth because I think they just help you to miss the lettuce that you want to chop as you roll this around. I think I would put this handle up top. And the reason for doing that is that your hands will be right above the blade you're gonna put a lot more force directly under your hand where you have the most power. You may even wanna use something other than the plastic here, maybe line it with a, with a piece of metal or use something that can actually sharpen uh, to create a blade. I think that would make a lot more sense. I think this has room for improvement. Should I buy this? Should I keep it? I think I'm only gonna give it a two out of five. If you're actually chopping cucumbers and iceberg lettuce, you may have a lot more success with this. If you expect it to chop other things, I think you have better things in your kitchen that will solve that task. You're a little bit more of a salad squasher than a salad chopper. Industrial vegetable chopper. So this Luna Lando looking thing that's sitting in front of me, it's a rather heavy metal industrial looking, basically it can turn a potato into tiny little french fries or any vegetable you put in here. It's gonna cut them into rectangular shapes. We're gonna try a variety of vegetables and let's give it a go. Put it on top, place this above and I'm going to come down and press. And guess what I've got, nothing. I'm actually kind of Destroying the top, oh, the potato's kind of stuck in there. Press down, 
and I got nothing. Let's try banging it down. All right, it's going in a little bit, but I can't say that's successful, or I can't believe that's the way this is supposed to be used. Hang on, this may get messy. I'll be right back. I'm not sure that's what we were looking for. I wonder what a tomato would do. Perfect. Maybe I should go clean up. Let's see how that large metal Lunar Lander looking chopper compares with using just a plain old knife. Let's rate its effectiveness. Zero out of five. It really didn't do anything. I couldn't get it to move, I couldn't get it to dice, I couldn't get it to even barely get started. And it's huge. I'm gonna try this again using a slippery left hand, my non-dominant hand, to see if I can point out any deficiencies in the design. And who am I kidding? I couldn't even do this with my right hand, non-slippery. I already know what it's gonna be. Zero. Oh, zero. I'm not gonna waste your time. In terms of usability, I would rate this zero. This thing doesn't work at all. Zippo, nothing out of five. Let's see how I would redesign this. Instead of 10 blades across, let's make five or six. Uh, and then I would come out here with a lever. And then this is gonna have to have some sort of plunger. So as you push down here, you're gonna have some mechanical advantage. You're gonna have a ratio. Let's do some Lunar Lando legs with squeezing this potato between those blades, what we're gonna end up with is a thing like this, but this is getting squished that way as it tries to pass through the blades. It's getting squished by the width of the blades. This is gonna be quite a different animal than this, but I think this thing has some really fundamental issues. My buy rating for this is zero. Even with all this material, it seems to do little or nothing. Please fly to a galaxy far, far away. Herb chopper. This is designed to chop herbs with a gentle rocking of the wrist. Let's see how effective it is. Got some rosemary here and some sage. So let's start rocking. These blades are pretty sharp. And I feel like this is doing what it's supposed to do. But let's see what I got. I would say, uh, depending on what I'm doing, I would stop right about now. But I feel like that was successful. Let's uh, move on to the sage. And the blades are pretty sharp. They're cutting this without much effort at all. And again, I would say success. These blades will fold up. And let me see if I can figure out how that happens. They will fold into themselves, push from one side, Spin this around, click it, and it's ready to be stored safely. Let's see how that one compares to a more traditional wood and steel mezzaluna. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a five out of five. I thought it worked really well. It benefits from having sharp, sharp, sharp blades. And the fact that you can close it up, I think is a benefit. Thank God he likes something. Let's test its usability. Whoa, I'm definitely less coordinated doing it lefty. There's not a whole lot of pressure involved here. What I would do at this point, if I was designing or redesigning this, is I would look a little more closely at what is causing this to scoot forward. In terms of usability, I would give this a three and a half out of five. I think trying this left-handed with a slippery left hand pointed out some usability issues that I think are relatively easy to correct. Let's see how I would redesign this, and I've got several thoughts about uh, what to do about this. 
I would make this action a lot more obvious. I would design this tab so it looks like you pull it, it looks like you push it. One way to do that would just be to make this look like uh, in cross section, just a little bit more like a pull tab. I would make this look like something that you push. Maybe do a concave shape so it looks like your finger gets in there, it looks like it wants to go that way. Now this wants to push into a point where it can still roll into itself, but I think it's gonna be important to do that. If I flatten this in some way, and I'm gonna exaggerate, I'm not sure this could be molded this way, but I would at least make a flat area up here so you can feel the angle that it's out. I would think about a third blade, possibly. Seems like a little less work. One of the things I do like about this and the shape of the blade, so I'm happy with that, is that there's not a whole lot of motion that you have to take. That rocking of the hand covers quite a bit of area. That being said, I think there's room for improvement. In terms of a buy rating, I would give it a four out of five. When I was using my less coordinated hands, it was going out of control, and I would hate to give it a five and have somebody cut themselves because these blades are pretty sharp. You also may be able to use it as an egg timer. Cheese chopper. In front of me now is the cheese chopper. Its purpose in life is to make perfectly even vertical slices of cheese. Let's see how effective it is. We'll park the cheese inside. And I'm just going to experiment. There's a wheel here. There's a series of gears. It looks like if I am careful, I can increment the cheese and adjust the slices. So let's go right about there. Press down and maybe that was too thin. Let's try again. Let me go a little bit thicker. So down, hmm, still not quite right. It's funny because as I'm doing this, I could see this wheel move, which means the cheese must be incrementing up by itself. And I can see that's the case because it started out thick and it tapered down a bit. I'm a little sad. So let's try this again. Let's, this time I'm gonna hold the wheel so it doesn't shimmy up. And that is a relatively thick piece, but it is a lot more even than it was previously. So holding the wheel seems to help. Let's see how the massive plastic cheese chopper compares with using a regular old knife. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give this massive looking cheese chopper a one. There are other devices, which I think are a lot simpler than this, that would also slice cheese evenly. Let's try this again using the left-handed oil test. And I'm gonna hold the wheel again and push. And lifting this now is not that easy. One of the problems is it's clear plastic on white it's a little bit difficult to see what's going on. I'm just wondering if these levers have locked the blade in place. I don't know what else it could be. Let me see if I can back off. Whoa, there it goes. So I think it just jams itself in. I'm gonna hold the wheel again so it doesn't edge forward. Push down. That one was actually okay. I think I lucked out on that one. I found some deficiencies, they do feel a little exaggerate when I'm trying to release this with my left hand. In terms of usability, I'd have to give this a one as well. I don't think I could recommend it to anyone. It jammed itself down. You do have to hold this wheel, which is a little odd. I just can't go out and say this is for you because it's so easy to do. Let's see how I would redesign the cheese chopper guillotine. I'm not sure I would want to design something with this much plastic. I think we can get away with a lot less. I think I would look for options that are just self-contained within this handle. Let's draw a piece of cheese in here. I think one of the directions I would go is to add something to the front of this that would push up against the face of the cheese, but also assure you've got an even slice. I think there would be something here so let's just put an adjusting wheel on here. So there'd be some sort of adjustment wheel that would adjust the thickness and that adjustment wheel would have to do it, I think on both sides. So it would actually adjust this fence. I would also make this part of the handle a lot more stable, a lot more hand friendly. So I would make this part of the handle a lot thicker and a lot easier to control, but something that would 
be able to be steadied. Push down, you're going to use the same amount of force pushing down. I think you can get away with something a lot more clever that is just self-contained in this handle. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the cheese chopper a one out of five. I think you may be just as happy using the knife that you already have in your kitchen. One thing's for sure, I would never cut the cheese with this thing. Salad cutting bowl. I have in front of me a salad cutter bowl. It is designed to cut a head of lettuce into perfectly even slices. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to cut the end off. I'll just get this down to size. Uh, I'm a little bit sad that I have to cut it down, but I don't think I'll lose it. I think I will uh, chop this part as well. And it just fits. I'm gonna put the top on first. The top has a, uh, has a shape to it. It really is not chopped down low enough, but I'm gonna go with this anyway. And it's time to start chopping. So, slice one, slice two, slice three. We are, we're not quite through the, the lettuce because of the height and because of this little shelf on this part. But I'm gonna keep going because I think I could break it off at this point anyway. And it is perfectly evenly cut slices of lettuce. It works pretty well. I'm gonna try this again without the help of my hemispherical salad cutting guide and try using just a plain old knife. I feel like I have more control, I can see what I'm doing and there's absolutely no effort to cutting lettuce anyway. As odd as this thing is, I would say in terms of effectiveness, I would give it a four out of five. Four out of five sounds kind of high. I'm not saying you should run out and buy this, but it is giving you a guide and it is resulting in evenly cut slices of lettuce. I'm gonna try this again, this time using the left-handed oil test. And this is a little less coordinated. I'm going to use my left hand to slice and I do notice a big difference in the challenge I have using a slippery left hand and a knife. It's kind of pulling itself apart. I think I may be close to 90 degrees here, so I'm gonna try again. It does guide the knife. I'm just not sure it is an amazing improvement over just using a plain old knife. In terms of usability on a one to five scale, I would give this a three, because I just don't think the size is correct. I think you're gonna have to cut the lettuce and kind of guess how much to cut. So let's talk about a redesign. I think to hold a head of lettuce, it's gotta be significantly larger, which means more plastic. One of the advantages of making this larger is that if we're not bottoming out here on the top, then the top would be a lot easier to spin. Let's say this is your head of lettuce. When you spin this to cut 90 degrees to get tiny, tiny slices of lettuce, it's not going to tear itself apart as you spin around. I would give this some way to spin. Maybe just something to grab. Whatever goes up here though, is gonna have to have slices in it. It's gonna have to continue the slices so you can get the knife down. So, scratch that idea. One thing I'd be concerned with is this is, even with just our limited use here, it's just starting to get scratched. I think if this is really gonna be usable, this would have to be a cutting board plastic or a piece of wood. But I do think if we're gonna go with the hemisphere idea for slicing lettuce, I think there are a couple of improvements that could be made. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the salad chopping bowl a one out of five. I know it gave the usability and the effectiveness a higher rating. That being said, I think there are better alternatives that you may already have in your kitchen. I think unfortunately, we're looking at a lot of wasted material. I don't think you're gonna use these if you bought them, at least four out of five. I think they're just headed for landfill. This is something that nobody wants to see. Congratulations, Herb Chopper. You are the only thing that made me smile all day.